This video is your full guide for nutrition for optimal performance and recovery during your runs. It will contain information on how each of the macro and micronutrients affect your performance and recovery before, during and after your runs. It will also contain information for hydration in running. Starting off with a pre-workout meal, which should be made with the idea of maximizing performance in mind. As a result, this meal's main purpose is to give your body lots of usable energy, but not be so difficult to process that your body expends energy digesting it. It should generally be consumed 90 minutes to 3 hours before your run, as it gives your body enough time to digest the food you've eaten, but still means you have a sufficient storage of energy for when you get to your run. However, this is something that many people have different experiences with. I sometimes am able to get away with eating even just half an hour before an easy run, with minimal to no effect in my performance. Some people have the complete opposite experience. And this will ring true for most of what I say. Treat this video as a guideline, not a rule book. Everyone's body is different and therefore will experience things differently. You just need to do some experimentation. Now onto your macronutrients, which are protein, carbs, fat, and we're going to include fiber. We will start with carbohydrates as these are the most fundamental source of energy for any post or pre-workout meal that you have. This is because carbohydrates are very easy for your body to convert into usable energy in the form of glycogen and a primary source of energy that your body uses if the session is intense. We consume carbohydrates as that's broken down into glucose which is in turn broken down into glycogen and glycogen is what gives energy to your muscles for movement and exercise. However, unlike fat which our body can store in vast amounts, glycogen can only be stored in a very limited capacity in our muscles. This is why many marathon runners who didn't fuel effectively often hit what's called the wall, which is when their glycogen stores have been completely depleted and their body needs to rely on fat as a primary source of energy. As fat is not converted into energy very efficiently, it means that they have much less energy and their performance significantly drops. As a result, you need to make sure you have a plentiful supply of glycogen, which means consuming lots of carbohydrates before your run. Generally, you want to consume complex or starchy carbohydrates, as this will result in a more sustained release of energy during your run. A rough guideline is that 60% of your meal should be carbohydrates. This could include things like brown rice, brown bread, oats, and whole wheat pasta. Sweet potatoes are also a good option. Now, although your meal should be high in carbohydrates, something they should be low in is fat and fiber. As whilst these nutrients are very useful, they're difficult to digest for your body whilst offering little in the way of performance. Although fat is a primary energy source used for slow, steady state exercise, think easy runs at a slow pace. It's not something that can be quickly converted by your body into energy, as it can take upwards of six hours for your body to digest and even longer to turn into a usable state of energy. Fiber has also been linked with having gastrointestinal issues when consumed too much before a run, which is another reason why it should be avoided. Therefore, you should try and make sure that you consume these nutrients at other times during the day far away from your run, as they are still very important for maintaining performance and a general healthy lifestyle. This means avoiding high quantities of foods such as nuts, dairy, and vegetables, as these are all high in either fat or fiber. Moving on to protein, which is an essential nutrient for the growth and repair of muscles. This is because whenever you exercise, you cause micro tears in the muscles that you're working. While this may sound alarming, micro tears are actually a good thing in your muscles that you want to have, as they allow our muscle to grow and develop through a process called muscle protein synthesis. This is basically where your body converts protein into muscle and uses it to fill the micro tears and build the muscle in general. If you don't consume enough protein, then your body will repair its muscles at a much slower rate, meaning your muscles are unlikely to be recovered for the next day. If you find you're often sore after your workouts after not even training particularly long or hard, then you may want to look into consuming more protein as part of your diet. Now, whilst it's important to have after your run, it's not essential to consume lots of protein before your run, as your muscles have yet to develop any of the micro tears that are normally caused by exercise exercise. And furthermore, protein is actually very difficult for your body to digest in a similar way it is to fat and fiber. So consuming too much protein before a workout can make your body expend lots of energy trying to digest it, which should be used for your actual running. However, I would still recommend consuming a minor to moderate amount of protein before your run, as it means protein is already in your system when you develop micro tears in your muscle during your run, allowing for the quicker repair of your muscles. As a rough guideline, aim for about 15 to 20% of your pre-workout meal to be protein. So that concludes the nutrient needs for a pre-workout meal. And to be honest, most of this applies to the post-workout meal as well. You should still focus on having a carbohydrate-based meal to replenish your energy stores quickly. And try to reduce the amount of fat and fiber in your meal, as it will only slow the digestion of more important nutrients. There are still some important differences to your post-workout meal however. A post-workout meal's primary goal is to replenish your energy stores as quickly as possible and maximize recovery. Because of this, the post-workout meal should be consumed as soon as possible after the run, ideally within 30 to 60 minutes of completing the run. This is because your body replenishes glycogen in the muscles at its fastest rate within an hour after completing exercise. And glycogen is not only your source of energy, but it also helps regulate muscle protein synthesis. Practically speaking, it may be difficult to get a full meal in within an hour of completing a run. So try bringing a fast digesting snack with you 
or have one immediately once you get home, such as a slice of white bread with jam or honey. The big difference in the composition of your post-workout meal compared to your pre-workout is that it should have much more protein in comparison, as now your muscles have lots of micro tears through the exercise and muscle protein synthesis is occurring. And it's also when protein synthesis happens at its quickest rate. So look to consume more protein after your post-workout meal. Popular choices include meat, fish and eggs, with more plant-based alternatives including legumes, nut butter and chickpeas. Now onto your micronutrients. It's important to make sure that you're consuming enough electrolytes after your post-workout meal. In this context, an electrolyte is a mineral that your body uses for its everyday function. Examples include zinc, magnesium, potassium, among others. A lot of these electrolytes are lost in your sweat, which means you need to replenish them in order to ensure you don't get a deficiency. Sodium and chlorine are the two most important electrolytes for recovery, as these are the ones most lost in your sweat. Sodium in particular helps with the regulation of hydration and can also cause muscle cramps if you don't consume enough of it. What's nice is that those of you who took chemistry would know that sodium and chlorine combine together to make salt, meaning any salty snack is a great way for you to get your electrolytes in. This is especially important if you're prone to sweating or the weather is hot, as you'll be losing more electrolytes. Another important electrolyte is iron, which is used among other things to make red blood cells in the body. Because red blood cells are what transport oxygen into your muscles, it's very important to ensure that you're not iron deficient and have a good store of it. It's not lost in your sweat, so you don't need to worry about replenishing it after your run, but you should be consuming it consistently throughout the day. Similar to how you need to be consuming fat consistently throughout the day. High iron foods include leafy greens, legumes, and red meat. Now on to nutrition during the workout, where the main purpose is to give a small shot of energy as quickly as possible to the body's muscles. Now this only really applies to people who are running more than 60 minutes in one run, as your body should have significant glycogen stores already from your pre-workout meal. However, if you're running for an hour or significantly more, you may want to be looking into this. The food consumed during your run should be a very fast digesting source of carbohydrates. You want this source to be as low in any other macronutrient as possible, as this will only delay the delivery of glycogen to the muscles. Say that three times fast. Honestly, you won't be able to. A common food that many runners use during their workouts is something like an energy gel or an energy stick. Whilst these are effective, I think honestly they're expensive and over-glorified products, and you can get much cheaper and still effective sources. These alternatives include things like dried fruit or gummy sweets. Basically anything that has a high glycemic index, which is the rate at which the carbohydrates are broken down in your body. A high glycemic index means the carbohydrates are broken down very quickly. Another option is sports drinks like Gatorade or Powerade, as these provide you with a shot of carbohydrates, but also give you a source of electrolytes. This brings me on nicely to the final section, which is hydration. Staying hydrated is of course important in all aspects of life, particularly in exercise, it plays an important role in performance, injury prevention, and recovery for athletes engaging in competitive sports. In day-to-day -day life, we can use thirst as a guideline for how much water we should be drinking, and simply drink when we're thirsty. However, as thirst has been shown to have a delayed onset, and even small dehydration has been linked to a decrease in performance in runners, it's important to preemptively drink before your runs in order to maximize performance. So try and make sure that you have a glass of water before and after your workout. Unless you're running for longer than an hour or are really trying to micromanage your performance, you really don't need to worry about consuming water during an actual run. However, if any of those things do apply to you, try to consume a glass of water every 15 to 20 minutes. Tea, coffee, and soft drinks are also perfectly valid substitutions for water. Just be wary that consuming too much caffeine may give you gastrointestinal issues. Like most things in this video, you just have to experiment. But that just about concludes nutrition for runners. Let me know if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy training.